Alwa's Awakening is an adventure game from Elden Pixels. Originally released in 2017, it drew heavy stylistic inspiration from 8-bit NES games, and now in 2020, work has begun on making a version that runs on the actual NES. I'm Brad Smith, the lead programmer for this NES project, and over the next few months, I will be sharing some of its development process with you. The world of Alwa was originally put together with the Tileed Editor. This is a free and open source tool for making game maps out of a grid of tiles. Aside from making convenient building blocks, tiles are important here because the NES hardware also works with a tiled grid. NES graphics have two main components, a background layer for things that don't move very much, and a foreground sprite layer for things that animate and jump around. It separates these two things because its hardware isn't very powerful. It takes a lot of memory and circuitry to make things that can move around freely. So the sprite layer is more limited and can only cover a small portion of the screen. We'll talk more about sprites in a later video. To cover the rest of the screen, the background layer takes a more compromised approach. Memory was very expensive, and they could not afford to store each pixel individually like you can on modern computers. Instead, it divides them into groups of 8x8 pixel tiles, which we can reuse in a grid that covers the screen. This concept comes directly from early text displays, where your tiles are letters in an alphabet, and you reuse them to display words on the screen. The difference on the NES is that the tiles can have anything in them, not just letters, and also have a few more colors. For your backgrounds, the NES provides 4 kilobytes of memory space for tiles. This is enough to cover a square of 128 by 128 pixels, and each pixel has 4 colors. Divide this up into 8 by 8 pixel groups, and you have 256 tiles to use. This is only enough to cover about a quarter of the screen in unique pixels, so some of them have to be reused to cover the rest. To select which tile gets used where on the screen, another place in memory is dedicated to the grid. With one byte for each tile, it would take one kilobyte to cover a screen 32 tiles wide and 32 tiles tall. In NES development, we call this grid of tiles the name table. Finally, Nintendo sacrificed the bottom two rows to add more colors, so we really have a screen that's 30 tiles tall, with an extra 64 bytes for some color information. This 64 bytes is enough to make a 16x16 16 16 color grid, where each area chooses one of four sets of colors to use on that region. This is known as attributes. On other systems, the attributes of a tile might include making it flash, or flip, or invert colors, but on the NES, the only attribute of a tile is for selecting a color palette to use. Nintendo made a lot of arbitrary choices here, but the end result is a background layer with 16x16 16 16 pixel color regions and 8x8 pixel tiles. So Alwa's world is a grid of rooms made of tiles. Because it made a strong effort to emulate the 8-bit style of the NES, most of it can be directly translated into graphics that we can use on the NES. It's already made up of 8x8 pixel tiles, and almost everywhere they've managed to meet the 16x16 16 16 pixel color attribute rules. So I've written a tool that looks at the tile-ed maps. For each room, it tries to find a set of four color palettes that fit, then extracts the tiles used, and finally constructs a name table that places those tiles on the grid. Here's the result. A lot of the rooms already come out perfectly on the NES. But in some places, there were a few too many colors used, so it couldn't quite fit the requirements. Here you can see the mountains in the background have come out in the wrong color. That's okay though, the export tool keeps a list of these errors, and it will only take a small amount of tweaking to get these looking nice again. You might have noticed that the edges of the screen have been cut off though. This is because Alwa was made for a modern widescreen display. The NES can only output a narrower 4x3 picture so there's just no way to show the whole room at once, like in the original. We've decided that this one room, one screen concept had been an essential part of the original game, 
So instead of scrolling back and forth across the original wide rooms, we're rebuilding the world to fit the NES's smaller screen. So with all of this in place, we can make rooms and get them onto the NES. However, there is one more important issue to consider, which is data size. In an NES cartridge, data space is much more scarce than it is on a modern computer's hard drive. If you install Alwa's Awakening from Steam, it will take about 270 megabytes of space. On the NES, we're trying to fit this into a half megabyte cartridge, so we have to do things in a much more compact way. Uncompressed, each room is about 5 kilobytes. That's 4 kilobytes of tile pixels, and 1 kilobyte for the name table grid and its colors. With more than 400 rooms in the game, that would already take up 2 megabytes of space. So the first obvious way to bring this down is to share tiles between rooms. Each area of the game tends to use the same tiles for most of its rooms. So instead of storing them per room, I have a global set of tiles that any room can draw from. The second thing is to try and compress the name table data in some way. Like most NES games, the world is built out of 16x16 16 16 pixel blocks, rather than individual 8x8 8 8 tiles. So if I look at the name table in 2x2 2 2 tile blocks, we start to find a lot of obvious redundancy. A unique block will take 4 bytes to indicate its 4 tiles. However, if that same block is reused later in the room, with only a single byte, I can instead store a reference to the earlier block, using one quarter of the data. I can also take repeated runs of the same block, like this row of water, and store the repetition information instead of a whole byte for each tile. With a few more techniques like that, we have a compression scheme that's effective enough and efficient to decode, and the name table data gets a lot smaller. Room tiles and name tables together will make up most of the data in this game, so cutting them down to size was a high priority here. So that's the first step in bringing Alba's Awakening to the NES. We have our map backgrounds ready and working, and we can take a look at the world. It's an empty world because we don't have any characters to put in it yet. But in the next video, we will begin to solve that problem with sprites. If you'd like to know more about the game, please go to eldenpixels.com, where you can find information about Alwa's Awakening and its sequel, Alwa's Legacy. If you'd like to know more about its NES version, keep watching this channel. Thanks for listening.